Okay, first question. How much do minor bumps and hits to the head impact somebody post concussion? So I, this question actually happens to me a lot as a clinician, whenever I have patients coming in that have a concussion, oftentimes they will report fear of hitting their head again. So even anytime, uh, you know, they, let's say they have a baby, anytime the baby kind of bumps heads with them, they think that they have another concussion, right? These mild impacts. People are concerned about this. I've had other patients who are afraid to even ride in vehicles because going over speed bumps scares them. And they, you know, if they hit a pothole, they feel that that little jar is going to affect their brain in some way, okay? First thing we have to understand in answering this question is we are not that fragile. We just aren't, right? If you look at sporting events, look at a sport like football, they're not getting concussed on every single play. And I guarantee you that almost every single one of those hits is harder than your baby hit you in the head. If your baby hit you in the head with their head, do you think they have a concussion? If they don't, it's unlikely that you do. So these little tiny bumps, a concussion, in order for a concussion to occur, it's the stretching and shearing of brain cells. So in order to kind of create, in order to cause a concussion, you have to stretch a nerve cell or a brain cell to a great enough extent to pull open these voltage gated channels. Now, every time you get a little bump in the head, is that enough acceleration to open these voltage gated channels? No. You need a substantial amount of force to do that. The research on this, and we've talked about this in terms of G-forces and things like that, research on this looking at instrumented helmets in the sport of football find that 70% of the impacts that happen in football are under 30 Gs. Impacts that result in concussion are over 70 Gs. That's a lot of force. I'm going to put this in perspective again. I've done this before. In looking at biomechanical studies from motor vehicle accidents, we see that impacts um, where the airbags deploy. So your airbags are set to deploy in a change of velocity of about 50 kilometers per hour. Or for you Americans, 30 miles per hour. Your airbags are set to deploy. So you're driving your car, you rear end somebody hard enough, the airbags go off. That translates into 60 G's of acceleration or deceleration through the seat belt. So even a car accident to that extent where the airbags go off may not be enough to cause concussion injury. So when you think about this and you have a little bump in the head from anything, let's say you hit your head on a countertop. I have a number of patients that come in with their concussion symptoms after bumping their head on a countertop. Did you hit your head the equivalent of a car accident? Did you hit your head the equivalent of, and when these studies look at these football helmets, they find that less than 0.1% of all the impacts that happen in football actually result in a concussion. So when you hit your head and you think you may have suffered a concussion, did you hit your head hard enough to be 0.1% of an impact that would you'd see in a football game? Okay, it's a, it's a lot of force. It's not every little bump and in, in hit, right? Like this isn't causing a concussion for me, right? A bump in the head might not necessarily cause a concussion. If it's a substantial hit, then for sure, okay? Now, the argument is then made, well, what if I have a concussion right now? Don't I have an increased risk? Well, yes, you do. In the initial first few weeks, smaller hits can cause subsequent concussions. But that's only in the first couple weeks where that vulnerability period has been found to exist. Beyond that period, at least in the animal studies, because we can't study this well in humans, is if we were to give these animals second concussions after recovery has taken place in terms of that low energy deficit that concussion results in, if you get hit again in that period, it's just another concussion. So there is no increased vulnerability necessarily in that from a, from a mechanical standpoint. Studies looking at humans with these large epidemiological studies, so what I mean by that is when you look at a, a huge group of people, like 10,000 people, they'll find that people that have had a previous concussion 
tend to get concussed a lot more frequently than people that have never had a concussion before. So the results of these studies will suggest that having a concussion previously increases your risk for having future concussions. Okay? It does according to the correlation. But correlation and causation are two different things. Just because you've had a concussion doesn't necessarily mean that's why you're more at risk for having a future concussion. Maybe, and this is what these studies don't take into account, is the fact that just because I've had a concussion, maybe I'm more of a high risk player. And that's why I had the concussion in the first place. If I don't change the way I play and I still play aggressively, I'm gonna increase my risk for subsequent concussions. Not because I'm more vulnerable, but just because I'm this type of player that gets concussions because I go out there and I, I bang hard and I put my head down and I go into things. If that's my style of play, I likely have had a concussion before and I'm likely more likely to get one in the future. So this is where these studies fall short. When you look at studies that actually examine the amount of force required to cause concussion. And so there's a study that was done uh, in Ottawa recently where they took people coming into the emergency department and they were adolescents and they were adolescents that had fall injuries. So then they would recreate the fall. Okay, how, how high did you fall from? What surface did you land on? Did you have a helmet on? Uh, was it turf? Was it ice? Was it concrete? Where, where did you fall? And they would document all of this. So there's hundreds and hundreds of these incidents. And they would then ask, you know, did you have a previous concussion before? Or is this your first one? And then they would kind of categorize them based on that. They would then take that data and say they fell from a height of three feet. They were this much weight. And they would calculate how hard they hit the ground. And they tried to see if those that had a previous concussion had less impact force required to cause their subsequent concussion than those who were having their first time concussion. And they actually found that there was no difference. So the group that had had a previous concussion and the group that didn't have a previous concussion were getting concussed with the same amount of force regardless. So in terms of susceptibility and vulnerability, we haven't actually identified an increased vulnerability or susceptibility to impact in people that have had previous concussions. There's a correlation saying that somebody who's had a previous concussion is more likely to get a future concussion, but we don't know if that's due to brain vulnerability or some other factor. Style of play, position play, yada, 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 body size, right? Maybe I'm a smaller player, I get knocked around more, that's why I get more concussions. Who knows? But in terms of brain vulnerability, it hasn't been shown to be there. So a little bit of a hit to the head to you is not necessarily going to increase your, it doesn't cause a subsequent concussion. It may not even cause the first concussion. The amount of patients that I see that have persistent concussion symptoms from bending forward and hitting their head on a countertop or a, uh, you know, hitting their head on a door as they open it, I don't think that's enough force. And so um, there's a lot of other factors at play that can cause symptoms and the symptoms are very nonspecific. So, don't get too worried about the little bumps and things that happen throughout your life, right? Riding in a car, we are not that fragile. If we were that fragile, I don't even think we would survive as a species. We would have been extinct long ago because, you know, we've been fighting for forever, okay? So that's the answer to that one. I hope that helps people that are concerned about the hits to the head that they may be getting.